Tough guys are having trouble hitting this 34 Alpha. Why do I need a faster drone? We could accomplish more really training if we had a variable speed drone capable of high G maneuvering on the deck. That's where it's really at. I understand the Fire B-2s cost more. Will my ship be charged for the bird if we get a kill? The fleet has a lot of questions these days about Fire B-2. What will it do? What threats can it simulate? How do you get to fire at it? This is not a public information film, but rather a nuts and bolts answer to the questions that are in your minds, you, the users of this new supersonic target drone. We aren't about to tell you about training, because you are the men who determine the need and level the hard way in combat. Most Navy pilots flying today cut their teeth firing against BQM-34A target drones. It's still a good flying target. But frankly, it now has a hotter performing brother, one designed to meet modern requirements. Not just the threats the Navy is meeting today in Southeast Asia, but the next generation threats you could meet tomorrow almost any place on the globe. You can see how the 34E evolved naturally from the 34A. Longer and cleaner for Mach 1.1 flight at only 50 feet above the water. Mach 1.8 at 45,000 feet. And 1.5 at 60,000. It still retains the all-important augmentation equipment carrying capability of its predecessor for maximum simulation versatility. And of course, it is equally recoverable and reusable. Also, there's a new jettisonable fuel tank. Here's the specific speed altitude envelope of Fire B-2. Altitudes of more than 60,000 feet. Speeds of more than Mach 1.8. This overlay is representative of current operational Soviet fighters in terms of their altitude and speed capability. The significant area of potential air superiority engagements is adequately covered. It should be stressed that Fire B-2 has a truly three-dimensional flight envelope. It is definitely not a docile, forgiving target. says it pretty well. The Echo model bird can pull 5G turns, almost 80 degree banks, doing a 180 in just over one nautical mile at Mach 0.95. It is truly a demanding aerial target that will challenge the skills of any fighter pilot. Ten channels of telemetry downlink display information are available for the ground controller. 38 remote command channels enable the controller to present an elusive variable speed target with various modes of augmentation, a target that flies smart like another pilot. One of the many possible mission profiles might look like this. A climb to 50,000 feet with a 26-minute interval of maneuvering flight at Mach 0.9. Then a jettison of the external tank a quick supersonic climb to 60,000, and an 18-minute dash at Mach 1.5. The low-altitude profiles are equally dramatic. Here's a 22-minute mission starting at 500 feet, ending with a supersonic dash literally on the deck 50 feet. Let's briefly look at the augmentation antennas in the S, P, and XC bands and the variations in radar cross-section that the 34E can generate. This is the azimuth pattern of the unaugmented bird. Here, the pattern with a lens reflector. 
or one possible TWT augmentation, or another. So it goes through different frequencies and polarizations, giving you the variable realistic target simulation you need to duplicate the real-world threat weapons from high-performance aircraft to sticks. And speaking of sticks, Fire B-2 is not just a hot target for air-to-air. -air. It also fills surface Navy training needs precisely. Again, let's review the actual threat weapons. Here's the familiar Soviet surface-to-surface -surface cruise missile, Styx. There are 125 Komar and OSA-class patrol boats armed with these weapons. Additionally, 104 Styx armed ships can be found in the fleets of 10 other countries, from China to Egypt, from Cuba to Algeria. Styx has a radar homing capability. The Israelis should know they lost an almost new destroyer to the missile. Not surprisingly, the intervening years have brought a second-generation cruise missile, NATO code designation Shattuck. It's currently routine armament on several Soviet destroyer classes, and it's on about 50 submarines, some of them nuclear. The probable missile configuration is about 35 feet long, a 200 nautical mile range, and speeds in excess of Mach 0.95. Again, here's Fire B-2 for comparison. The training similarities to be derived from this Echo model bird are readily apparent. This is a typical 34E simulated cruise missile attack mission profile. About 80 miles out, the Fire B-2 would dive from 20,000 feet at just under sonic speed. At 5,000 feet, the external tank would be jettisoned, and a low-altitude control system would automatically dive the target at Mach 1.1 to 500 feet off the deck. At this point, more than 50 miles from the ship, a supersonic dash at a constant 500-foot altitude would bring the drone directly overhead, or presentations as low as 50 feet can be offered. The mission could be a firing run, or just a training exercise for radar tracking. Either way, Fire B-2 is low and supersonic, flying the way a Soviet cruise missile could fly. Surprisingly, recovery after a damaging hit is possible even at this low level. Any loss of engine power, carrier signal, or generator failure will automatically initiate a power-off climb until speed has decayed to Mach 0.3. At that time, the standard automatic parachute recovery sequence begins. For brevity, we have detailed just one of many possible missions. Whatever the weapon, whether gun or missile, there is a Fire B-2 mission profile that will give it a realistic training exercise. Perhaps the best thing about the 34E is that it is with the fleet now. It is available today at the weapons training ranges of both the Atlantic and Pacific fleets. Of course, like any other targets, they are under the jurisdiction of the air and surface type commanders and are subject to inventory and allotment limitations. But 34Es are with VC squadrons on both coasts today. They are being flown, recovered, refurbished, and flown again just like the classic 34A subsonic Fire B-1. And like any other target, the expense is absorbed in the normal expenditure allowance exercise budget of CNO. When the birds reach the fleet, they have already been bought and paid for. The Echo does cost the Navy more than an Alpha, but it does a great deal more and it has the same prudent design emphasis on reuse as the 34A, and some alphas have been recovered more than 30 times. The harsh reality is that no heavyweight fighter can train well with an inept sparring partner. It takes equals to train effectively, and no shooter, whether in a cockpit or on a ship, will ever get real-world, high-performance threat-duplicating training from slower drones with restricted maneuverability.
The Navy's combat environment is tough. That's why the Navy has designed, built, and provided the Fire B-2 for your use. 